my name is Jim Gambaro, and I'm a, uh, I've been a photographer for about as long as I can remember. Uh, I started when I was six years old, and my first camera was a, 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 one of the old twin Duoflex, Kodak Duoflex, which had a twin lens. When I knew that the professional used twin lens cameras, I saw it in all the movies. And so I knew that was a serious camera when you looked down into it and you did your thing. Of course, the pictures, as I look back on them, were six-year-old or 10-year-old uh, photographer's pictures. But the, the, the seed was planted. And uh, I uh, ended up going to school in uh, Montclair University in North Jersey. We lived in Patterson in North Jersey. And I went to school there in uh, North Jersey after the Army. I had gone into the Army after um, high school and uh, was a writer for the Army, did a little bit of photography there as well, but mostly writing. And I was always on the horn between writing and photography through, through my whole career, basically. Uh, in uh, college, it was, I was an art major with photography as a minor. And uh, after college, taught for a couple of years and then went back into uh, writing for a local newspaper and then becoming staff photographer also for a local newspaper. Uh, and uh, for a while, I actually wrote textbooks for a a uh, correspondence school in photography, the School of Modern Photography, which I think is now defunct, but I was a, a writer for them, of their textbooks, rewriting it for a while. And then we moved up to uh, New England, I uh, moved to Western Massachusetts, to Belchertown, where we live now, and uh, I've lived there since 1978, and uh, basically worked for the state. I worked with children with disabilities uh, up until 2001, and then retired. Uh, when I retired, it was right at the cusp where digital photography was starting to become a significant producer of work that um, i have been doing my wet darkroom forever and loved the work in the wet darkroom. But the idea of having a camera where you, uh, you had the, at least the, uh, an idea of what the product was going to look like in your hand, even as you were shooting, was remarkable and then being able to translate that into a computer and then have full control over the product, not having to worry about a technician, not having to worry about what lab, not worrying about what somebody had for breakfast that morning in terms of you know, producing the work or communicating properly, uh, and being able to get out of an image uh, so much more. Uh, you have to start with a good image. You always have to start with the best you can do, the best image that you can get out of the camera. But to go into the computer then, and I taught myself basically how to work with the computer, how to work with the software over the years. Um, and I'm, I guess about five years ago, I started getting to the point where the work that was coming out was starting to look like what was in my head <laughs> when I started. Uh, it also started moving away very visibly from the more journalistic landscape, recording and doing a nice, beautiful landscape into interpreting what was going on in front of the camera, of bringing up images that were based on reality, that had always had a, an, a, a, a real image as a start, but the product frequently as is visible in a lot of the work that's on display here, the product uh, sometimes bears very little resemblance uh, at first glance to the place it started. But that's because it went through the computer up here. <laughs> and that's, uh, there's nothing, you know, as the work in this whole exhibit will show, everybody's computer, this gray matter up here, um, translates what the camera sees in many different ways. Even you start out with the same raw material, but once it gets through the, both the computer and the vision of the photographer, you don't know what's going to happen. But that, that's what art is about. Art is about translating reality into some uh, vision or some impact, emotional impact, visual impact, uh, whatever. Uh, in a way that uh, reflects your attitude towards life or your, the, the artist's attitude. Uh, my work process is, uh, <clears throat> I would say, is largely uh, serendipity combined with, maybe not initially, but certainly in, almost on bringing up an image, 
it's the serendipity of looking for something, finding something that really interests my eye. Because that's the first thing that has to happen. I have to see something that really grabs the eye and, I, oh, I, and that, I, that, that looks like it has promise as an image. And then figuring out how to crop, the, how to use the camera to, to, to render it in a, initially as a way that really grabs my eye. Uh, that's the, and it, I don't plan shoots. I usually, um, I, even my travel work is sort of, I wander and look for things. I, I look for things to come in front of the camera or to, to recognize things that are happening in front of the camera. Is it, that's, I think part of that is where my, what my talent is, is recognizing a composition as something that's happening in front of the camera that looks interesting. The computer it becomes the, the workshop in which that develops. Uh, and sometimes it goes another whole direction than my original concept. But frequently what, what, what I'm really doing in the computer is expanding, uh, going deeper into the image, going more deeply into the image, and finding things in it, sometimes literally finding things within a larger image, smaller pieces that are even more impactful, have more visual impact or more meaning for me. Uh, so, but I, I am not one to say, I think I'm gonna go out today and find you know, a left-handed widget at five o'clock in the morning uh, with three turtles basking in the sun on something. And uh, if it's, they're not there, I'm gonna bring my own turtles and I'm gonna put them up there and, and shoot it. I, I can't work that way, but I have to, I, what I, I, I work with what I find. What I think I'm good at is finding that first image and, uh, and seeing things that perhaps that either other people don't or other people uh, don't have time for or aren't there at that moment anyway to do it instead of me. Uh, but the computer is my uh, playground. Well, I actually, I have, uh, I have one message for almost any artist as far as that goes, but it includes photographers who, photographers, if their aspiration is to produce significant work, and that has to be a given. Sometimes that's not part of the equation. Maybe it's just producing nice work is fine and nothing wrong with that. Uh, if you want to produce more significant work, I would say have fun. <laughs> and don't be afraid of the camera. Go out and have the best damn fun you can have uh, with the camera. Uh, enjoy it. Uh, uh, serious work is, every, somebody has to do serious work, I guess. That's, that's a given. There are people there who take their work entirely seriously. Um, I don't, I'm, I'd like, I, I am, I'm happiest when my work is seeing, it gives some people real pleasure. What I would say is know your cameras, know the equipment as well as you can. Uh, the, the kind of equipment you have will grow, will develop, as your skills develop, as your eye develops, will change. But it doesn't, it's not the camera that takes the picture. It's not the camera, the camera's the vehicle. The, the camera is this thing up here. What you have to develop is your eyesight, your vision, your ability to see something happening in front of the camera, to evaluate light, to evaluate intersections of shapes, uh, to evaluate the potential for something to become an image. Uh, that's the most important thing. If you, can't, if you don't have that ability to compose something in your mind to, to see it, uh, the camera's irrelevant. Uh, but learn the camera well. Learn your own, get a handle on your own vision, have, a, have as much fun as possible doing it, and not, don't worry about being seen. Worry about pleasing your, the, the kid. I, I talk about my 12-year-old. I have a 12-year-old that lives inside my head. And when he says, whoa, and then I know I'm onto something. And if, if he says, boring, then I know I'm, you know, I've got to do, I've got to work. I've got work to do. And that's the, it's that inner, uh, your inner response. If you can't respond to an image, how can you expect anybody else to respond?